Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video here at Tailmon. Today we're going to be playing with Colorless Lugia, one of the new decks from Poly Evolved. Not technically new, right? Because we know Lugia V-Star has existed for a very long time and has been a top deck for a very long time now. However, um, this version of the deck in particular has not seen any sort of play just yet. We have the new Therapeutic Energy to help us make Snorlax a more powerful attacker. We have access to Reversal Energy and Luxray as a way to damage um, if we're falling behind. Compensate for that. The Reversal Energy can also help power up an Arceus in a pinch. We also have the new Iono to help us with disrupting our opponents. And we have the Bravery Charm to help make Snorlax a much more powerful Pokemon. Now, one big finisher that we have now is the Weirder V with its powerful attack doing 40 damage for every energy attached to it. And if it comes from the bench to the active, it can absorb energies from your other Pokemon as well in the process, which is great. Can do a lot of damage. You can just fully power it up with Arceops. Each double turbo energy is worth 60 damage um, in total. So a potentially powerful finisher. But one issue I have found with this deck so far is that in terms of damage output, it's a step lower than single strike. Yeah, which it tries to compensate by trying to focus on single price attackers like Snorlax. But overall, it does feel like a more balanced version of Lugia, whereas the other version feels extremely unbalanced and broken, right? So we're going to take it for a spin. The most important thing is how well we can set up this deck by not playing um, the urns. It does have a little more wiggle room to play, um, I mean, the urns and the bravery charms neither add any consistency um, to the deck. We now have Ionos as well um, to help with being more conservative with your resources, but overall the deck should play just the same. Some awkward hands, some powerful hands. We'll just have to see. Yeah, let's jump into some games. If you want to support the channel, you can use code TAILMON to get 5% off at Potan store for your online codes. 10% off for your sealed product at Flipside Gaming and 10% off on your aluminum accessories at TC Evolutions. Or if you're looking to buy singles or sleeves, you can fill up your cart and close the tab. Then click on the affiliate link in the description and check out. That way you can support the channel over at TCG Player, Cart Market and Dragon Shield. This video is sponsored by the Pokemon TCG deck building website PokemonCart.io. ¿Eres de México y necesitas cartas de Pokémon? Busca Hyperbeam Cards en Facebook e Instagram. Y si estás en Tijuana, búscalos en el local C27 en el Centro Comercial Lotai. All right, so here we are with our first game with a pretty decent start, I would say. Um, Triple Ultra Ball is very peculiar, and what the heck? <laughs> I have no idea what this is. I'm pretty sure this, like its evolution, does like a lot of poison damage, which with our... Um, therapy energy, we will be able to completely nullify, so... I have no idea though, truly no idea what this... what this is planning on doing overall. Um, I have a feeling Luxray will probably not be super super useful, so I'm gonna go ahead and Ultra Ball, grab myself an Archeops, and then Ultra Ball again. Grab myself a Lugia. Though I could grab myself a Luminion and um, go research. And then hope I get a Lugia. I don't like the word hope. I feel like I'd rather hope to get a Lugia V Star next turn off of the Ultra Ball, or just grab it anyways. So I'm good with this for now. Um, decent start for sure. Very, very decent. And we'll see. Yeah, we shall see what happens. We do see a worker now. Um, all right. So there's the Glimora. Uh, why can't... Oh, they just pass. Wait, what? Why did they... Oh, did they just Ascension then? Oh, they just used Ascension. Okay, so... We just win now? Right? Pretty sure. 
we just win out right here um i mean so of course once again <laughs> not a very uh competitive opponent but what we do get is our oh, therapeutic not therapy energy what we do get is um a turn two double archives with Luca V star right which is always the goal yeah and this list does feel a little bit more streamlined than single strike overall in terms of um not the sequencing but like this doesn't have a lot of like moving pieces uh, with the urns and whatnot, every energy can be attached to every single Pokemon, as opposed to the single strike energies, which cannot be attacked to, attached to Lugias and stuff. So even though I do feel like this deck is overall less powerful, um, this version could definitely be a, the version to to play. I'm just gonna knock on a cut. Um, this version could be the version to play um, in a future rotation, right? Um, as I believe um, Lugia, I have it right here. Lugia is regulation F, right? It's, if it ever focuses, it's, come on. Well, sort of focuses, so it's regulation F. So our next format, of course, our current format is E block onwards. Our next format will be F block onwards, right? All right, so we're waiting for our opponent, according to this screen. PCG Live has been having, it seems, more issues than usual. There's a big, big bug happening um, with Spirit Tomb, and two Spirit Tombs being in play just immediately like causes you to, to lose or something. Um, overall, PCG Live all right, <laughs> PCG Live is um, like I think I tweeted out my expectations were low, and um, so far they have been fulfilled exactly. Yeah, games do not feel super enjoyable. Um, quality of opponents aside, right? Like games using the software just does not feel enjoyable you're always on edge waiting for something to break i admittedly have not run into too many issues myself but um but yeah overall the like you just need to take one look at twitter to see how bad the community sentiment is towards ptcg live yeah all right my opponent won the coin flip however they let me go first which could be an indication that they're playing um mew now very sad situation for me as i have two not so great starters and no way to get lugia down on turn one but it's actually shen pao so why would my opponent choose to go first i have absolutely no idea I mean, is there even any merit to attacking, I guess? If I get a double through, I can start doing some damage. Um, but yeah, with no way to find a Lugia, I'm probably just going to have to Luminion research and see what I get. Yeah, so not the best, not the worst, but my opponent letting me go first is just outstandingly bad. Never choose to go second seriously never not with Mew not with Lost Box I get this question asked so many times just don't do it yeah like I don't like people blindly trusting what I say just don't wow these energies this foil actually looks cool are these new energies that we're gonna get because this logo is new but this energy is from 2013 but 2013 energy league energy did not have this logo so huh that is peculiar okay this capturing aroma changes things if i get heads then i get double discard if i get tails i just search for lugia and professor Burnett away the archive says so a lot of the times capturing aroma like there it didn't matter which result i got i was gonna get benefited uh from it so that's actually really really cool yeah 
I should check my energy count. All four jets, couple therapeutic, one V-Guard, no gift. So on the lower side of things, and looking good. I mean, if my opponent goes boss KO, then so be it. Yeah, but it's not looking super, super likely. Um, I like you would normally expect like a Irida, Rare Candy, though there is a possibility of an escape rope, I guess. So maybe benching the aluminium preemptively could have been a good idea. I feel like I'm not having a lot of respect for um, TCG live opponents in general. Um, those energies do look really cool, though. Why? Why do you have different energies, friend? Why are all your energies not these? These generally look really cool. All right, we see Greninja. So we're gonna see more cards. We might actually somehow get the first KO despite missing Lugia on turn one. Um, but yeah, so I, I've had like a lot of even personal friends complain about, oh no, the Lugia players always get what they need with the capturing aroma, right? They needed tails to get the Lugia. Um, I flipped tails, right? But the thing is, or like there are many times where they don't, they generally don't realize that their results might actually not matter at all, right? It generally might not matter at all. And um, they were going to get like, like in this scenario, right? If I flipped heads, I would have grabbed an Archeops and then Luminion researched away, hoping to find a, what is, oh, you can, uh, discord from everyone from anyone um if it had been heads i would have got an archaeops luminian research found my lugia if it's tails i find my lugia and then i play the burnet right so regardless of which result i was okay however um there's many people that assume that you're getting lucky which is actually not the case right so now i don't even have to play down the luminian I should summoning star and power up because I don't want to draw energies right here. All right. So I do want to uh, get a KO. Another thing I could do, however, oh, that's actually probably better. Something I could do here is go boss KO the Vax Caliber. That actually seems like a much stronger play than um, the Iono. I'm still going to power up with four energies. Two jet is fine. Actually, probably a reversal. I don't foresee myself using reversal at all. Um, and then I go Luminion, boss KO, and I mean, that's going to be as close to game as you'll have. Right? Because then how does my opponent power up again? And bye-bye, Vax Calibur, right? This thing can do 120 damage, sure. Not a big deal. I wonder if we'll ever get X-Guard energy. And then this boss allows me to chase down another potential Frigibax, a Palkia, if that, um, if that ever gets uh, played down. But yeah, sometimes you can win by not... KOing like the big two price Pokemon, right? I chose to take less prices in order to have a much more fluid and long term plan, if you will. Yeah. If I had knocked out the Baxcalibur, then my opponent benches this Xian Pao, and there's a chance I get return KO'd yet again. All right. Now, my opponent very uh, smartly or very correctly benches double Frigibax, which is most definitely. A potential problem here um, they do have a lot of cards in their hand they are however down two back scalibers never mind they're just putting them back okay so very 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 well played by my opponent it's so dumb that this card does not show that we are two years into the release of PCG live since the beta and cards like that still do not show the cards that are getting put back it's like it's it baffles me yeah it completely completely baffles me and shows the zero comprehension 
of the people making this game as to how to play the actual game of Pokemon. But that's besides the point. Um, all right. So I have the option to either chase down a Frigibax or disrupt my opponent's hand. I think this time around, it's going to be a much better idea to disrupt because bossing one Frigibax doesn't really accomplish much if they can just set up the other one with that humongous, um, humongous hand. Um, I feel like I just want to take the two prizes here. So, because I could attack with the Snorlax, but then that just gives him another turn um, to set up. Whilst this applies a good deal of pressure, I am down my poor Weird Ear, so I might need to attack with Lugia again. With the double turbo, Snorlax KOs everything that's significant, right? I guess I should thin a little bit, right? Oof. Okay. Definitely running low on the energies, but this two prizes should definitely help, right? In some way. I also know I, I'm playing for bosses orders. I know there's still one prize because I only had access to two when I searched my deck for the first one. So I could have grabbed a boss's orders right here. Had a decent chance I did not in fact grab it. The other one's at the bottom, but it is what it is. You know? I wish I had the gift energy here as a way to, like if my opponent gets the immediate KO and I'd be in trouble. They didn't immediately promote, so maybe no Irida, Rare Candy, Baxcalibur. If they do have that, however, I could be in trouble. But we do just see another super odd before thinning before drawing so we could see a research no just irida okay so what did they even put back i have no idea okay so there's the irida right there's two energies do they have a third they do need a third to ko me right here Okay, so another mistake by my opponent. Yeah. You know? If they had not used the ability and just drawn with the jet energy, then they still have more water energies left in the deck to be able to draw them. If they find one, then they can search for another two. Right? So very, very, very questionable decision making by my opponent right here. And there's the three energies, unfortunately. So now they're one boss and a few energies away from winning the match and my Aono literally gave me nothing which is very sad so i'm gonna have to go in with the snorlax right about now which i do have 200 hp which is quite a good bit Ooh, what a top deck <laughs> that is a pretty nice top deck not gonna lie that was a pretty fan-freaking-tastic top deck right there. I will fall asleep. I do have the jet energy to potentially get out of that. Another gift. Um, so yeah, I did price quite a few energies and two bosses orders. That top deck was really, really nice. The sleeping animation, like one thing I will say as a graphic designer wannabe and motion graphic designer, the best thing about PC Live are some of the animations. Yeah, others are very questionable. But some of the best things about PC Live are most definitely the animations. All right. So I do I I do stay asleep. Can they set up another Backscalibur whilst taking a knockout? Hoping they can't, but we shall see. I have the guaranteed retreat. I don't have the guaranteed KO, however, but attacking this Shen Pao could be good. I don't think I have enough energies to get to prizes next turn, which is a little bit of an issue, but we'll see. We shall see. How many energies do they run? 14. I have yet to see. They're playing two super odds. Oh, one superior energy retrieval. They play so many energies. 
I'm playing switch card there is strictly wrong like in this deck because of backscalibur right so i'm playing switch card and skater spark doesn't make too much sense but wow they do have the back-to-back irida once again very candy backscalibur how many energies do they actually play 13 and 11 they can i mean well surely they have a superior energy tool but they've already played a supporter which means yeah thank you they've already played a supporter which means they have not wow <laughs> they cannot boss i am still asleep there's the energy no superior energy retrieval no ko and that i don't think that's game i don't think i have the energies to win right here but what i can do is oh i do i do actually have two jet energies or i could go um boss ko the max caliber and probably win regardless but let's just do the thing we'll attach both jet energies we will jet energy into the active and then we shall ultra ball grab the v star and barely win yeah Despite us losing that first turn, definitely not the most standardized Baxcalibur deck. So take this with a grain of salt, but I mean, solid win overall, I guess. Solid, solid win. Um, there's the other boss. I think I priced two bosses and four energies, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> which is sad. Uh, but yeah, on to the next one. All right, we won the coin flip. We have an Ultra Ball to search for Luminion and Burnett and our Luya Vistar. We even have a path to a peak counter. So as long as we're not up against something like Mew, oh, or Maraiden, dang it. <laughs> well, okay. So the Bravery Charm actually makes it so that even if they fill up their bench, they cannot KO me with Raikou, right? This could still be Lost Box, but it's probably Maraiden. If I Ultra Ball and grab a Lugia, sure, I will not um, lose per se, but, 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 I will um, have literally nothing to do next turn, all right? So with that in mind, I generally, it's either pass or bench weirder attached jet energy, but then that opens up a possibility for an escape rope. So, <sighs> dang it. Maybe weirder attach is correct though. But then why did I attach the bravery charm, right? Because it doesn't save me anymore. Right now they do 240 with another Pokemon that's 270. I think I'm gonna risk it. I honestly think I just take the risk and hope they don't KO me. Because, yes, I could Ultra Ball for an Arlugia, right? I could Jet Energy and Weirder. Um, either way, especially if I Ultra Ball for an Arlugia, I'm just in top deck mode, right? And I'll probably just end up losing regardless. So, we'll see. And if, get, if they get the Maridon powered up with the Switching Card or the Stadium, then it is what it is, you know? It is what it is. All right. Well, there's another Raikou. Raikou cannot KO me, remember. All right. And they already retreated. So that's good. Okay, they're powering up the Raikou. Oh, or not. <laughs> yes, let's go. <laughs> let's go. They failed to KO, which is fantastic. All right. We get to evolve. Okay, now step number two in this process is hopefully there's no... Um, there's no... Burnett priced. 
right? It, it's not, and there's no like three archives as prized. Perfect. All right. So we are able to get this KO. All right. Alrighty. So now the issue is <laughs> this text issue in general is the damage output. A hundred percent. Yeah. Weirder can get a KO. So can Lugia. But realistically. Um I mean I do need another Lugia, I guess. I guess it's actually fine. So never mind. When establish a Lugia. So my three KOs are Lugia, Lugia, Weirdir, right? And then they're gonna KO me back each and every time, and that's completely okay, right? Therapeutic energies will definitely not come into play. This grants me protection. I mean, this grants me um, anti death draw with the gift energy. And if they choose not to KO the Lugia, then I just KO them again, and we are good. So. I feel like I'm not gonna bench the weirder to keep it as a surprise ish. Um, definitely want to discard the stadium. All right. So now Raikou can KO me, of course. I'll get a few extra cards. Um, getting another KO with Lugia also sounds pretty good on the Raikou itself. Um, I actually just realized I didn't need to commit all these energies to the Lugia, so that was a mistake. I should have just um, committed a double turbo. So that's my bad. Um, would be costly. Could be a costly mistake for sure. All right, 500 damage. Not a big deal. You get a collapse stadium. I think just Ultra Ball for the Lugia seems like the right play. It definitely should have enough energies after this, right? And if I don't, then I can go into the weird here, but definitely a mistake on my part. Well, there's the boss, in fact. So that probably changes my plan, in fact. So let's do this. The boss's orders will change my plan, make me a little bit more energy efficient overall. So I can do this. And then... Hmm. So, actually... Oh, well, I think this is fine, right? I just, I don't want to be hit with, like, an Iono. That could be... Hurtful. Right? Um, so I'm just thinking, if I go boss now, I reset them right, and like, what could they possibly attack me with? I think it is boss. I really do think it's boss. And then just power up the weird ear. Well, oh no, maybe this is a bad choice. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm making a mistake here. I think I'm overdoing this, overthinking this. I should have just powered up for energy, taken a KO, saved the boss. But now I can't. Oh, so what I should do is just knock out a Regielek instead of the Raikou because Raikou cannot evolve, right? Whereas Regielek he could. So if I knocked out the Raikou and then they evolved everything and knocked out the Weirder, I wouldn't have a knockout next turn. But now I always have a knockout on the Raikou. I will require a boss. Um, but if they go boss KO the Weirdir, I kept my Ultra Ball into Luminion into boss, right? So it was a win-win. I didn't need the boss of the prizes. And then if they Iono, then that means the Weirdir survives. And I can just power up with a million energies. Yeah. <clears throat> So we should be good here. There's a research, so that's GG. Yeah. 
Weirder, I'll just be doing so much damage. Literally attaching all the energies possible. EXP share, of course, um, <laughs> didn't need to be played because if I get a knockout, I just win the game. And I also get extra energies right there. And we are good to go. And I even have a boss orders in case I'm somehow 20 damage short, but I'm pretty sure I won't be. So it's just power up all the energies to the weird ear. Each double turbo is 60, right? So that's 120, that is 200. I'm fairly certain. So I need more energies. I'm just attaching all of this to be safe. I'll check the damage and 280. Yep, with this would have been 340 and I actually would have even been able to knock out a Regia like EV Max. So yeah, this EXP share, all it did was literally delay <laughs> my win. So yeah, overall the deck can be pretty powerful, but I can see how it lacks that powerful damage output. Snorlax is fantastic, right? But Snorlax doesn't knock out V Pokemon until it KOs V Star. So it really opens up yourself to like boss KO plays playing around the Snorlax. I don't think the Snorlax is threatening enough, whereas Evil Dollar, Stone Turner through weakness are very powerful. And um, Tyranite RV, of course, just wrecks anything in its path, right? So I'm pretty sure this is why in this version of the deck Whilst it looks very cool and it's very uh, fluid in that way, um, it's just less powerful than the Strangle Strike version by a significant enough gap to where I cannot advise you to play this version over the Single Strike. Yeah, because like the format is very back and forth, back and forth, and I could have focused on two hit chaos with the Snorlaxes. But that also means with enough bosses orders, because you usually use like a Lominion to set up, you'll have your Lugia, right? So then that leaves very little wiggle room to play as a single price deck in that way, you know? So yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.